Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get up and running with Buffer. Buffer is a social media management tool that allows you to manage multiple social media accounts from one place. It's kind of like Hootsuite if you're familiar with that. You can also schedule posts for all of your social media accounts for the future. So to access Buffer, you need to go to Buffer.com. You'll notice that when you're on this page, you can just click the Get Started Now link to get started. But before we do that, I do want to talk about the pricing of Buffer. So you could click on the pricing link here, but I already have the tab open. So here are the primary pricing plans that you can subscribe to when you use Buffer. So you can see there's the pro plan, the premium plan, and the business plan. The pro plan is only $15 a month. It allows you to use up to eight social media accounts to schedule up to 100 future social media posts, and it allows for one user. You'll notice that the premium plan allows for 2,000 future posts and two users, and then the business plan allows for 25 accounts, 2,000 scheduled posts, and six users. Now, they don't make it very clear at the top of this page, but if you scroll down a little bit here, there's a free version as well. And it says down here, at the end of your trial, you may downgrade to the basic free plan, which includes three social accounts and 10 scheduled posts for one user. I think that's a great option if you're not sure if you're going to use Buffer long term. You can start with the free trial, and then you can downgrade to the three social accounts, 10 scheduled posts, one user. And if you like it and you feel like you're missing out on some of the value of Buffer because you're unable to add as many accounts and schedule as many posts, then you can go ahead and you can subscribe to the $15 a month plan. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with Buffer. So I'm going to go back over here, and we're just going to go over here to the log in button up here at the top. Now, you can log in with a Twitter account, a Facebook account, LinkedIn account, or just an email address and password. Uh, so if you have never used Buffer and you don't already have an account, go ahead and create an account either with your email address or with one of those social networks. I actually have one that's already created, so I'm just going to log into that account. But it is a brand new account, so it should look just how yours does when you first log into a new account. So here you can see we are now in Buffer. And when we first access Buffer, what we need to do is we need to add some of our social accounts because that's the whole point, right? We want one unified place to manage our social accounts. So we can go ahead and just add some social accounts just by clicking on connect your social accounts. Now you can add as many as you'd like here. I think I'm just going to add two for now, uh, just so that we can get into Buffer and start using it. So to get started, we'll go ahead and add our Twitter account. And we just have to authorize Buffer access to our account. Obviously, you're going to have to do this to any of the social accounts that you add to Buffer. Okay, so as soon as we add an account, we start our seven-day Publish Pro trial. So it allows us to connect up to eight accounts, schedule up to 100 posts. Right now, we can only use one user. And if we'd like, we could also take a quick tour by clicking on the blue button here. We're just going to actually close this out since we're doing a tutorial anyways. So now that we've added a social account, you'll notice that we're in the Publish section of Buffer up here at the top. So we have a few different areas. We have the Publish section, the reply section, and the analyze section. And we'll take a look at each of these. But within the publish section, all of the accounts that we've added to Buffer will be listed on the left. So you can see that we also have the option to add other accounts as well. OK, so now let's go ahead and add our Facebook account. I'm just going to click Connect to Facebook. And I'm actually already logged into Facebook. So I just need to go ahead and confirm that I'd like to continue. And I don't want to add my personal account, so I want to add my Facebook page. So here it is, AnsonAlex.com. So I'll select this Facebook page and then click Next. You'll notice that I do need to give Buffer access to my social media account. Obviously, we're going to be publishing posts through Buffer, so they do need access in order to push those posts through. So I'll just click on Done once I've read through that. And it now says that I've linked Buffer to Facebook. So we're redirected back to Buffer. We just need to select any of our business pages that we'd like to use. So I'll select the one that I have added, and I'll choose Connect These Pages to Buffer. OK, so now we're brought back into the Buffer app. You'll notice that within the Publish section, we now have two accounts listed. We have my Twitter account and my Facebook account. So to manage posts for these two accounts, we can just click over here on the left. And you'll notice that by default, there are already some slots right here where it's ready to tweet for us. So uh, by default, Buffer actually builds in automatic 
posts to any account that you add, but we can change how often we'd like each account to post uh, that's different from the default buffer setting. So right now I'm looking at the Twitter account. You'll notice that we have some tabs up here at the top. So in the Q tab, this is where we can add new posts to share, which we'll do in a couple minutes. However, if we go over here to the settings tab, you'll notice that there is a, another tab beneath settings. It's called posting schedule. So if we click on posting schedule, you'll notice that we have some options to create some posting times. And then down here at the bottom, we have some posting times already set up. So you can see right now, we're basically scheduled to post four times a day. So let's say that's a little much for us and we only want to be posting once a day at 8 a.m. I can go into this schedule and I can just clear out these other times. So I can clear out all the other times other than 8 a.m. for every day of the week. Let's say we even take Sunday off so we don't have a post for Sunday. Now remember, this is just for my Twitter account. You can see that my Twitter account's highlighted over here on the left. So that's the only one that we're editing right now. Also, important to make sure that you have your time zone set correctly. Uh, so I'm actually on the West Coast. So I'm just going to go ahead and type Los Angeles and make sure that that is saved properly. And then if we wanted to add a new time, we could do so right here. So we could choose the day that we wanted to add a time. So let's say maybe on Wednesday, we do a second tweet. And then we can choose the time of the day. So let's say this one is kind of later in the day. We'll say it's at 4 p.m. And then we can add this posting time. And you'll notice that it now appears in our schedule. So if we now go back to the Q section for this Twitter account, you'll notice that it's changed a little bit. We only have one tweet queued up per day, except for if we go ahead and look at Wednesday, you'll notice that we now have two tweets queued up, one at 8 a.m. and one at 4 p.m. Now, we can start adding content to post to our Twitter account. We can do it in two different ways. There's actually three ways, but there's two basic ways and then a third advanced way, which I'll share with you towards the end of this tutorial. Uh, the first way is we can just go ahead and share something right up here at the top. And uh, we have to choose which account we'd like to share it to. So we'll say it's our Twitter account. And then we can just choose what we'd like to share. Now you can put anything in here. This is going to depend on your business, on what you're using your social media accounts for, but this could be content curation. So you could be getting content from RSS feeds. A lot of people like to use um, tools like Feedly or scoop.it, or it could be content that's on your blog or website that you're trying to drive traffic to, or it could be YouTube videos. It can really be anything that you'd like. So I actually have a post that I just recently updated on my website. So let's go ahead and let's just grab the link to that post. It's my 2020 Google Drive tutorial. So I'll copy that address. Then I will go back to Buffer and I will paste that into Buffer. You'll notice that it shortens the link for me. And it pulls up some images so I can choose the image that I'd like to use. And I can go ahead and I could type what I would like the text of my tweet to be. And then when I think everything looks good, I can just go ahead and click add to queue. Now what that is going to do is that is automatically going to add this tweet to the next available slot. So you can see it added it into tomorrow's 8 a.m. slot. Now that's because I shared it from right up here at the top, which is kind of the general share section. Now that's all set. This tweet is ready to go. However, if I wanted to specifically choose which slot to share that tweet in, I could go down here to the list of times and I could specifically choose a time. So I could say, you know, I want to tweet on Tuesday. I could go ahead and I could click specifically in the Tuesday at 8 a.m. time slot. And then I could go ahead and schedule my tweet. I'm not going to make this one too complicated. Just going to click on schedule just so you can see that it puts it in the proper slot. So again, if we add a tweet or a post to the very top, it's just going to find the next one in the queue. So the next would, would go into Friday at 8 a.m. Or we can alternatively click in a specific spot to schedule a post for that specific time frame. If we wanted to start scheduling posts for our other social account, we could just go over here and we could click on the Facebook account. And you'll notice that we have some time slots for this account as well. Again, these were created by default by buffer. So if we wanted to alter these time slots, we could go over here into the settings section, and then we could click on posting schedule. And we could do exactly what we did for Twitter, we could go in here, and we could delete out the times that we don't want and add in the times that we do want. So I'm not going to do too much of that right now, I think you can 
manage that on your own. That's going to depend on your organization. I would definitely recommend using times that you're getting the most traction with other posts. So maybe on Twitter at eight in the morning is a great time for you, but on Facebook later in the day is better. Uh, the more you use social media, the better feel you're going to get for what times are good for your business and your organization. Okay, let's look at a couple other areas here within Buffer. So first of all, let's go back to this Twitter account and let's go, we've been working in the queue section. So this is where we can queue up posts. In order for us to see some analytics and see some data in there, let's go ahead and let's share this tweet now. So it's no longer going to be shared tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's now being shared immediately. So you'll notice that our tomorrow at 8 a.m. slot has now freed up because we shared this post. So I'm not sure if it's going to appear immediately, but if we go to the analytics section, we now have uh, this post uh, showing up here. We don't have any interaction with it yet because we just posted it. But the reason I wanted to show you this is because as you're posting things here in Buffer, you'll be able to see the interaction that those posts have had. And if you find a post that is getting a lot of interaction, hopefully it's not just a current event, a one day thing. If it's valuable over the course of the long span, and if you've watched some of my other tutorials, either here or on LinkedIn Learning, you know that I am an evergreen content producer. So I like to produce content that's going to be valuable for the foreseeable future. So most of the things that I'm tweeting is based on that content. So I should be able to retweet those tweets. They're still going to be valuable a month down the road. So I can go through my list and buffer. I can find out the ones that have been most popular and then I can go ahead and I can hit the share again button. And I have the option to add it to my queue, which would just put it in the next available time slot. You'll notice that up here, I can choose the profile that I'd like to share it to, or I can just share it right now, or I can schedule it for a specific time. So this is a really powerful feature of using Buffer because you can go in here, you can take a look at all your social accounts, you can find out which posts have been most popular, and then you can reshare them because you know that you're already getting great interaction from those posts, so why not share them again? Now, if you are just working on some posts and you haven't finalized them, you don't want to schedule them yet, you can go in here and you can take a look at the drafts section. Now, this does require an upgraded plan for Buffer, but this would essentially allow you uh, to draft out posts and different team members would be able to come in and work on those posts. So you might have like four different employees that are working in your marketing team. Uh, each of them would have their own Buffer account, but they could have shared posts in here that they could prepare together. So again, that's a bit of a premium feature, but it is available there for you. And then in the settings section, we've been in here earlier because we went to the posting schedule area, but notice that there is some other options in here. If you like to use a particular link shortener, you can choose which one that you'd like to use. You can see Buffer has their own, but you could use Bitly if you wanted to as well. If you we're using Google Analytics, you could actually enable campaign tracking. So you could connect Buffer to Google Analytics so that you could bring some of your analytics from Buffer uh, and you could view them right inside of your Google Analytics dashboard. So that might be something of interest if you're already using Google Analytics. And then down here, we have this option to shuffle our queue. This is a really cool feature. So let's say we have you know 50 posts that are already queued up, but we're not really, we don't really care too much about the order and maybe we've got them, you know, we've got some of the same posts queued up in our Facebook account as we do in our Twitter account and we kind of queued them up at the same time. We could just go in here and hit the shuffle queue button and it will shuffle the order of all the posts that we have queued up for this account, which would be the Twitter account right now, so that the order would be different than the posts for our Facebook account. So that's a great way to use the same posts across different networks, but not have them post at the exact same time. So creating a little bit of automatic variation in your social posting. Now there are a couple other sections up here at the top that I'd like to talk about. There's this reply section. This feature essentially lets you reply to and interact with all of the comments that you're having across social networks. So this just kind of creates it a more premium tool like Hootsuite. Uh, again, this is a premium feature and you do need to do uh, one of the business plans for this. So you would have to uh, do a free trial and then choose one of the business plans later on. So that's really going to be more for the uh, medium sized organizations or the small organizations that are relying heavily on social media. Now let's go ahead and click on the analyze section. 
So again, this is also a feature that is for the business users. So uh, this allows you to really dig deeper into the analytics of your posts. We looked earlier how we can see some of the interactions that we're having on our posts and how we can reschedule those posts for the future. But if you want uh, the detailed analytics that you would expect with like a Hootsuite or something like that, you will have to do the 14 day trial. Uh, and then you can see, for instance, Instagram story analytics. You get uh, tailored recommendations for when to post content, what type of content to post, and how often you should be posting. So this just gives you an additional set of tools that you can use alongside the basic tools in Buffer to enhance your social posts. Now let's go back and click on the publish section. There's just a couple more things I'd like to mention before I wrap up here. If at any time you want to add social accounts or delete them, you can go down to the bottom left and click on this Manage Social Accounts button. So you'll notice this is where we currently have our two accounts listed. We could add another social account up here at the top, or to delete these accounts, we could click on Manage. And then you'll notice that I can remove this account. If I wanted to assign another user to have access to posting to this account, I could go ahead and I could assign another buffer user. So that's great if you're a business that has a marketing team and you have multiple members of your marketing team that are going to be working on your social accounts. Let's go back to our dashboard here because we've noticed that there are some features that are for business users. So I do want to show you that at any point you can go over here to the right and you can click on this upgrade button. You'll notice that here are the different plans available. We looked at them earlier, but this is how you can upgrade to them once you're already inside of buffer. So You'll notice that you can upgrade to the pro account, which is the eight social accounts. And then over here on the right, you have your premium accounts, which um, allows you a lot more features with Instagram, really. Uh, so if you're using Instagram heavily, uh, you might want to use one of these uh, premium accounts. And if we look at the $65 a month one, uh, this essentially just allows us to use two users uh, with all of these features. Uh, I think for a lot of you, uh, you're looking for a simple solution so that you can automatically schedule posts for the future and that you can go in and find your posts that have been most successful and repost them when necessary. So this is how you can get up and running with Buffer, how you can add multiple accounts, how you can queue up some posts. I mentioned earlier that there are a couple of tools that you can use to curate content, and I just want to show you those tools real quick. Uh, the first one that we have is Feedly. So this is a tool, I'm not going to go into a detailed tutorial of using Feedly, but this is basically a way to subscribe to RSS feeds and social media accounts of people that you trust and follow so you can get content ideas. And then you can share some of these articles to your social accounts and you can do so via Buffer. Now you could also use Scoop IT. It's the same idea. You can subscribe to RSS feeds and social accounts. So you can you know, subscribe based on keywords or hashtags so that you get updated information when there's news in the industry or new technologies come out, that sort of thing. So if you're looking for ways to uh, curate content and find content to post on your social accounts, Feedly and Scoop.it are absolutely great for that. And then finally, I also recommend the Buffer Google Chrome extension. So I have that open in another tab as well here. You'll notice that if you go to buffer.com forward slash extensions, there is a Google Chrome extension. And this is really, really useful. So I'm going to install it real quick just to give you an idea of how this works and how it can speed up your social posting. So we're just going to add this to Chrome. You do have to be using Google Chrome for this to work. Okay, so it's now been added to Chrome and I can find it up here at the top with this little icon at the top right. So you notice it doesn't have much right here, but I will show you where it comes in handy. So now let's go back to that article on, the web, on my website that I was going to share. And I'm just going to click to open the article up. Okay, so it's actually a video and there is text you know, with it as well. It's basically how to use Google Drive. And if I wanted to share this without just copying the link from up here and going over to Buffer, Actually, I could just go up here to the top right and click on the buffer link. And when I do that, you'll notice I get this pop up. It asks me which account that I'd like to share it to. So I could choose my Facebook account. It puts the title of the article in here, the website and the link. And then I can go ahead and choose the image that I would also like to use. So let's see, this has a lot of different images. A lot of these aren't the ones for Google Drive. This is a Google Drive one. So let's go ahead and choose that image. And then we can just hit add to queue. And it says that it's been added to our queue. If we go back to buffer, you'll notice that there it is right there. 
This is the one that we just added via the extension. So using the extension alongside tools like scoop.it and Feedly can really speed up the way that you post your social account. So you can be browsing the web, every related article that you find to your industry that you find valuable, you can just hit that little buffer extension up on the top right and you can queue it up and then you can come in here to buffer where we are right now and we can go through all the ones that we've queued up. We can uh, edit, click on the edit button and we can edit some of the text. We can change the images. We could add hashtags or, you know, let's go ahead and save that. We could say, you know what, this looked really nice when I was reading it but now I just don't think it's a good fit for the other content that I'm posting so I can just delete it. Uh, so, again, using those RSS tools like Feedly, Scoop.it, alongside Buffer and the Buffer extension can make you a social media powerhouse and you can work very, very efficiently. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.